Hello, everyone. It is Wednesday, July 12th, 2022, and it is the 87th consecutive hangout of the Knowledge Bolide crew sponsored by Topher Spin Meteorites. Thanks for joining us. We're really going to offer a lot today. We have a lot of science and history about something that is very rare, and I actually wanted to learn a lot about it too, carbonaceous meteorites. Today, we're only going to be talking about three clans, the CM, the CO, and the CI. Topher is going to be doing live events. On, you have to be on um, Facebook to catch these. They're going to be on Facebook Live, not on the Zoom like they normally are. We are introducing a new segment when Topher comes back from Tucson. And we've already started working on it. And it is going to be something that involves one-on-one uh, -on -one time with each crew member uh, over time. It's going to take a few months. Um, so we're going to jump <clears throat> right into trying to understand carbonaceous chondrites. Carbonaceous chondrites are chondrites, but they're different. So how are they different? How are they the same? What do they have in them? What don't they have in them? Carbonaceous chondrites are really very, very fascinating meteorites. They're different in that they're not as uh, strong or hard of a rock. They're much more friable. Their elemental composition is more of a low temperature Thing. There's a lot more volatile elements in them. Ordinary chondrites are really pretty rock-like. They're mostly silicate, but the carbonaceous chondrites have some of those silicates, but they've got carbon compounds. They've got hydrocarbons, uh, alcohols, amino acids, etc., cetera, uh, and they've got water. And hmm. that water part is really, really important, as we'll see as we spin our way into this. Uh, right now, we're going to check out a, our first international video. This is from Marco Geiser. Hello, guys. Hi from Germany. Today, unfortunately, not live. But um, yeah, of course, I want to show you something. It's wow. an unclassified chondrite, NWA. Um, it weighs about 910 grams. And it shows a wonderful orientation. So you can see um nice flow lines on the front side and also yeah very smooth red maglips wow that looks that. really good wow and uh, the oh, back side yeah. of the stone yeah. shows nice uh frothy bubbly fusion crust <laughs> and of course those great contraction tracks look at that goodbye from germany see ya see you buddy Bye, guys thanks a lot Marco. Hi, Marco. Now we have the collector from Brussels, Maxime. Hi everyone, Maxime here. I hope you're all doing good. Today I will show you some of my CI, CM, and CO meteorites. And the way 6352. So this meteorite is nice because it is the exact twin sister of the Ornance meteorite. It is also a CO 3.4 chondrite. And when looking at it, you can see the typical features of CO meteorites, which are very small and dark chondrules in a dark matrix. You can see the white inclusions in there. And next to that, I have here a little vial full oh, nice. of crumbs from Aguazarcas. Ooh. This meteorite was really close from becoming the first ever CM3 meteorite. That's what I have here is the main mass. I wish you all plenty of great new meteorites in 2022 and see you in two weeks for the next hangout about carbon acid Bye. Awesome. With uh, Keynes, this was uh, an observed fall from uh, 1937 uh, near the village of uh, Keynes, Mislomorsky district of Tatarstan, Russia, with CO 3.2. Uh, one of them weighing 54 kilograms almost killed a collective farmer working in the field. The air wave was so strong that Bedriva was four to five meters from the site of the meteorite impact and was knocked off her feet and shell-shocked. And it was an observed fall from uh, 1872, and it's a CO 3.5 uh, carbonaceous chondrate. Uh, the account is a brilliant meteorite passed over. Uh, it presented the appearance of a spear of flame with two spheres of fire of an orange color. The track mm. of one seemed to incline downwards, that of the other to proceed straight forwards. A another cool carbonaceous. We've been talking about the, the CM um, type meteorites and the importance to science. This one is really special to me. Um, this is Wenchcomb, 
one of the unique things about this one that fell on the Wilcock driveway um, on that date is 319 grams were collected, but they were collected within the first 12 hours after it fell. That's important because mm -hmm. it hasn't had any chance to terrestrialize. It hasn't had any chance to be altered by rain, to be altered by any other, you know, terrestrial elements. It's actually large enough so you can see and the, just the makeup of it. Now, as we were talking about, this is really, really fragile material. I can crumble this in my fingers if I wanted to. So it's very rare that you see one of these. This is a slice of Aquazarchus. Wow. You're looking at 9.3 grams. It does have a side of crust. Nice thick slice. And what that kind of means is that uh, you're looking at meteorites that either come from the same parent body or at least from the same kind of reservoir within the solar nebula. So they, they formed next to each other, basically. So all those red blocks that I added in there, mm -hmm. those weren't around that he was documenting around 2014. The CIs uh, were named after Avuna, uh, which fell back in 1938, Tanzania. I threw the, uh, the COs and the CMs on one side together, because again, they are a, a clan. Uh, they are rare. And again, part of the reason why they're rare is they don't last long on the ground. You, you get these highly aqueous altered things, they fall apart real quick. The other cool thing about the CIs and the CMs are they have the highest abundance of pre-solar grains. So that's little bits of material that got incorporated that were floating around before we had a sun. I, I thought it was really interesting right here. 17 to 22% water by weight. So it's great you pointed that out because that's actually higher than some of the, the studies that they did on some comets. Uh, so I talked about CM1s only being four available. Uh, so this is one of those four. This is NWA12328, uh, and this is CM2, and it's just like all the other CM2s we saw. Uh, you know, this is 0.14 grams total, but it's a whole bunch of little fragments. Uh, and like mentioned, it, you know, it really reminds me of those uh, return samples. So that's kind of mm -hmm. cool to it. Uh, that's my sample of Avuna, and uh, the, the photos that I shot over were under the microscope. And you can oh, really sweet. see all those little uh, carbonate and uh, sulfate uh, gremlins growing yeah. on them in there. Mm -hmm. Although they look like uh, interesting little uh, black fragments in here, they're actually uh, growing a lot of that uh, terrestrialization going on. C, uh, O types, you can go ahead and subtype sample them. So that's, uh, that's the full set of the subtype samples there. Historics, uh, just a couple of the highlights were Lancé. Yeah. Uh, you get like American Falls, like uh, Warrington. Uh, that's a cool subtype. You got uh, 3.8 uh, Isna, which is from uh, Egypt. So uh, you can do the subtypes and you could do them with some cool falls. All right. Our last round of show and tell is with Pat. Pat, what do you have, man? Well, so got uh, Murchison, the mighty Murchison. This is a. Uh, a 1.3 gram slice of Murchison that nicely shows the uh, little tiny chondrules and uh, uh, lots and lots of matrix. Murchison is a really special one and a, and a very, very highly studied uh, meteorite. In September of 1969, this meteorite fell in Australia. Turned out to be a major, major deal. This material was super rare before this fall. And this fall was 100 kilograms. Uh, wow. So definitely brought a lot of this yeah. material to science. Turda is a weird one. It is a C2 ungrouped. And this one was a fall that happened in uh, Morocco. And if it doesn't really fit in with other things, it get, gets called ungrouped. So it has some things like the CMs, but uh, not entirely. So it is a, a complete oriented individual wow. uh, that, that didn't get rained on. Hey guys, thank you so much for joining us live and joining us on YouTube. I'm out of here. We're out of here. Going to the chillax room. See you guys. Bye.